Greetings, everyone. Now it's time to move into rational equations. We're, we're talking about moving up in equations. We had our two basic kind of equations that occur all of the time, the linears and the quadratics. Those have their basic solving methods. Now we're moving into uh, all of the other solving methods that sort of lean on them and eventually result in them, right? One very big one are the rational equations. These are equations that start off in fraction. That's, a, that's kind of sort of a simple way to, to throw at them. Um, but technically, there's something else, right? When we solved this one before, and I'm going to go through it again real quick because the method applies here too. But technically, this is not a rational equation because there are no variables in the denominators. There's still fractions there, and you know, rational tends to lead you to the idea of fractions. That's, that's sort of how the definitions go. But truly, the, the name rational equations is reserved for things that have denominators that also contain variables. It's a, it's a whole other category of uh, functions as well whenever we start studying those, okay? But the idea here is just like we've talked about before. If I have things with denominators, I can make the equation a lot easier on myself by just not having the denominators there, in which case I need to find a way to eliminate them, right? And since fractions are made with division, I use multiplication to perform that elimination. So here, I'll be multiplying by 35 because that's something that will eliminate with both a 7 and a 5 when it comes to division, 35, right? will divide by both equally and evenly. So if I multiply by 35, right, then that will get rid of my denominator problem. Do the divisions first. 35 divided by 7 is 5 times 12 is 60. So I have 60x. 35 divided by 5 is 7, times 3 is 21. 35 divided by 7 is 5, times 9 is 45. And then 35 divided by 5 is 7, times 11, so I have 77x. Which, of course, now this is a linear equation. Well, technically it was before also. Now it's ob more obviously a linear equation where I would add my 77x to both sides in order to eliminate that piece and subtract the 21 from both sides in order to eliminate that piece, I would end up with my 132x is equal to 24, <clears throat> which when I divide right here, uh, I would have x is 24 over 132. Oh. 137, whoops, I hope you caught me on that one, 137, yep, so then that's my final answer on that one, okay, and that's fine, that's technically still a linear though, but it has the same built-in method that I want to use. When I approach an actual rational equation of any kind, of any size, of any complexity, I just would rather get rid of the denominators rather than try to take them head on because they can, they can get rather complicated sometimes. Um, but before you do that, make sure you write down on your paper or in your mind, whichever one works you know, better for you, um, what X cannot be. Because remember, if X is in a denominator, then you've got a domain issue. And domain issue means something that you can't plug in, right? Something that when you plug it in is gonna cause a big boo-boo. And here, if I plug in the number zero, it causes that denominator to be zero, which is a division by zero, no good. So I kind of label that for myself so I remember for later, just in case that value comes up as a solution and I need to tell myself, oh wait, no, I can't use that one anyway, right? All right, so I look at my x, my six, my three x, and I try to get something that I can multiply, but it has to be something that will eliminate with all of them uh, when I multiply, right? So I'm thinking about multiplication and division here. It's obviously going to have an x, and it has to be something that can take care of 3 and 6. Well, that would be 6, right? And then x. So I'm going to multiply times 6x. And 
And remember, do your multiplication uh, divisions first, right? When you're multiplying, do these divisions first. X divided by X is 1. 1 times 6, I get 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1. X times 13 is 13X. Um, X divided by X is 1. 6 divided by 3 is 2 times 5 is 10. So notice now I am no longer in a rational equation. It is a linear equation. I can then subtract the 6 from both sides. And then divide both sides by 13. Don't forget to double check that this isn't the excluded value. X can't be zero, so we're safe. 14, four over 13 is perfectly good solution for this. Okay, now these don't always have to end up in linear when you're converting out of rational form like this. They can also end up in quadratic um, solving method. Here's one of those right here. First of all, I'm noticing I have x in the denominator. So I'm going to remind myself, hey, by the way, x can't be 0, because that would be a division by 0. OK. So then I need something that can take care of an x squared and an x. And those are the only two denominators I have to worry about there. All right, well, then that means I can just multiply by x squared because x squared over x squared will, will take care of itself. And also, if I multiply x squared over x, it will also get rid of this denominator. And then I just still have to multiply x squared here and here, just normal multiplication, right? Golden rule, I have to multiply it equally everywhere. Okay, so let's simplify. x squared over x squared is one times 12 is 12. Uh, minus x squared over x is just x times 7 is 7x. 1 times anything is itself. And 0 times anything is still 0. Looks to me like we got a quadratic. Let's rewrite it in standard form. And then you have a choice. Do I want to factor or formula? Well, remember, uh, the quadratic formula is you know, meant to be speedy, but if you can see a factorization right away, that's going to be a little bit quicker just because it's less writing. And I just happen to notice that negative 3 and negative 4 add to negative 7 and multiply to 12. So that means I'll get solutions of 3 and 4. Okay? The factoring method is only quicker if you see it right away. Don't forget that. Um, compare the answers, right? X just can't be zero. Well, then these are two good answers, right? These are good solutions. If I were to plug them back in, I would get something that is completely true. Lastly, let's get a couple of examples in the, in the more generic sense of how rational equations can happen. And that's, that's when your denominators have more than just the one piece, right? And you may even have some factoring involved in simplifying the, the equation itself. Okay, so a couple of examples here. Um, start by factoring out your denominators so that you can see all the individual pieces that you'll need. And also, it's a quicker way to determine uh, what your domain restrictions are, what x can't be, right? So I'm going to start by factoring here, um, the 2x plus 4, I can factor that into 2 times x plus 2, right? Okay, x minus 8 does not require any factoring. x squared minus 16x minus 16, though, I can factor into x plus 2 times x minus 8. All right. So now that I've factored everything out, I can notice that here, if x were negative 2, negative 2 plus 2 would be very bad, right? That would be 0. Also, 8 minus 8 would be bad. 
So x can't be negative 2 or 8. We have to remember that for that one. All right. Next, I want to go ahead and do my multiplication to get rid of the denominators, right? So I will multiply by the LCD. Well, having it factored out is going to help me determine what that is. I need an x minus 8. I need an x plus 2. I also need a single, just a 2. So that's actually what I'm going to multiply. All of those pieces put together are going to get multiplied to everything. So I will multiply 2, x plus 2, x minus 8. 2, x plus 2, x minus 8 times, right? And 2, x plus 2, x minus 8. Multiplication. So I'm multiplying that LCD to all three pieces. What does that do? Well, I can start eliminating some things, right? Remember, do the divisions first. If I eliminate the, the twos, right? This is already gone because I factored it, right? So is this. This is technically already gone because I factored it. The twos go away. The x plus 2 here and here also go away. That leaves me with x minus 8 times 1. Okay, so that's x minus 8. <coughs> minus, <coughs> minus, excuse me. All right, this minus is still here. Be careful that minus is attached to the whole fraction. Okay? Here the x minus 8s eliminate because you have one over the other. And I'm left with 2 times 4, which is 8, times x plus 2. Notice I'm not distributing yet. I want to keep everything straight. I want to keep together what I'm doing. Also, that negative needs to be a part of that distributed property. Okay, don't drop that one. Equals. Here, the x plus 2 will go away. And so the x minus 8. That only leaves me with 2 times 17. 34. So now I have a completely linear equation, right? x to the 1, x to the 1, no denominators. I go ahead and distribute my negative 8. Minus 8x minus 16 equals 34, right? Let me fix that. Minus 8x there. I'm going to combine my terms on this side. So x minus 8x is negative 7x. Negative 8 minus 16, negative 24. Okay. I only want letters on the left, so this 24 shouldn't be there. I'm going to add the 24. So negative 7x is now equal to 58. And I'm going to divide both sides by negative 7. So I have negative 58 sevenths. Too bad it wasn't 56 sevenths, huh? That would have come out real nice. Oh, well. Just leave the answer in that form. Improper is just fine. As long as, it doesn't, as, long as you can't reduce it anymore, which 58 sevenths can't be. Okay? So the idea is the same. I just have more pieces going on here. I have to factor and then take, take each one of those pieces uh, one at a time, right? Just do one, one piece at a time. It'll help you out. Don't forget to compare, right? Negative 58 over 7 to the original things that x couldn't be, okay? We're safe in this case, right? We're all good on that one. Okay, so one more example right here. I want to approach this the same way. I want to look at my denominators and make sure I don't have any factoring to do. x plus 4, x plus 2, all good. x squared plus 6x plus 8, that can be factored. So let's do that. I'm going to factor that into x plus 4, x plus 2. Okay. So that means this piece is technically no longer needed because that became this. And I want to multiply now to get rid of, oh, 
let's do our values, right? X can't be what? Negative 4 or negative 2. X can't be either one of those. I'm going to multiply by whatever pieces I need. I need an X plus 4. I need an X plus 2. So that's what I'm going to multiply. X plus 4 times X plus 2. X plus 4 times X plus 2. X plus 4 times X plus 2. Now we reduce. X plus 4 over X plus 4 is 1. Okay, so I'm left with 3X times X plus 2. I'm just going to write that out. I'm not going to simplify any bit of it yet. Next, the X plus 2s are going to wipe out, leaving me 5 plus 5 times X plus 4. And then here, X plus 4s are going to go, and X plus 2s are going to go, leaving me just the 24. Okay? All right, so let's distribute, get rid of our parentheses. 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times 2, 6x. 5 times x, 5x. 5 times 4 is 20. And I'm noticing that it's a quadratic. Remember, as soon as you notice, oh wait, it's quadratic, it's not linear anymore. Uh, okay, so everything needs to come to one side because I need that equal zero. Either one of the methods that you're going to use, no matter what method we approach, remember we want the equal zero for quadratics. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to get rid of this 24 so that this side will be zero. Okay, so then I have 3x squared. These are like terms. And then minus 4 equals zero. Okay, now it's possible this one is factorable, but if you don't see it right away, you'll end up saving more time. Just go ahead and going straight for the formula. And we factored one earlier. Let's go ahead and do the formula this time. So x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared, so that's 121 because 11 squared, minus 4 times a times c. 4 times 3, I'll just write it out, 4, 3, and negative 4, right? 4, and then there's A, and then C, don't forget, is negative 4, all over 2A. 2 times 3 is 6, 2A. Okay, so then I've got negative 11 plus or minus. Uh, double negative here is going to make this plus, right? So that's going to be 121 plus 48. Okay, so square root of 169 over 6, which is landing me with a negative 11 plus or minus 13 over 6. Now, of course, in this case, since we got the, the, the radical was doable, I'm going to go ahead and add it out and get both answers, right? So either x is negative 11 plus 13 over 6, or x is negative 11 minus 13 over 6. Here I'm getting 2 over 6, which is 1 third, which I compare it to my original, can't be negative 4, can't be negative 2. 1 third is good. Here I get negative 24 over 6, which is negative 4. Uh-oh, I can't have negative 4, so I don't use this one. And therefore, one-third is my only solution here. Okay? <clears throat> okay, so I hope this helps you in your um, equation-solving endeavors.